Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Vitor Hugo Moita, a research assistant at North Carolina State University. So Dr. Moita, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Hi, Clayton. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I started my journey in the animal science back in 2012 um, in Sao Paulo State University, uh, getting my bachelor's degree in animal science. After that, I moved to the Federal University of Lavras, where I got my master's degree. And I'm here in the U.S. since 2019, working with Dr. Sun Woo Kim at North Carolina State University, where, which I graduated with my PhD this last December. And my main focus was related to the functional roles of silanase and phytase for nursery pigs and broiler chickens. Awesome. So let's talk about some of that work you did for your PhD dissertation. Because um, I saw some of the studies you performed testing xylanase and phytase and looking at their effects on the gut microbiota, bone health, and nutrient digestibility and all sorts of stuff. Would you mind sharing about some of those studies? Sure. Um, firstly, I would like to thank all my lab members that contributed to this research, as well as my advisor, Dr. Sam Kin, and all the North Carolina State University staff. So we started investigating phytase initially for pigs because um, we firstly conducted a metabolism trial to better understand how phytase will work over the pigs because for a long time, feed enzymes have been associated with nutrient digestibility, growth performance. But since both of these enzymes target anti-nutritional compounds, those anti-nutritional compounds, sometimes they can make other nutrients unavailable. And with the further release of those nutrients, uh, besides the nutrient digestibility and growth performance, we aim to investigate if there is any effects over the intestinal health. So as I was saying, the first study was a metabolism study where we investigated the effects of phytase for nursery and growing pigs. Later on, we did another trial for nursery pigs where we went more deep into the intestinal health and uh, bone health. As, and when we talk about intestinal health, there is still no consensus among the researchers about the definition of intestinal health. But intestinal health, we, we can say there is a, a group of parameters that together evaluated can give us a better understanding what is going on in the gut. So in this first, in this second study for nursery pigs, we observed that when phytase was supplemented above 2000 FTU, we observed positive effects over the bone breaking strength of the pigs as well nutrient digestibility and growth performance. In this study, we did not notice any uh, effects over the intestinal health, but it can be due to a large number of factors. Um, variation among the animal species, among the animals, and sometimes uh, diet composition. But what I would like to point on among this study is that another concept that is a hot topic in this area that's being very discussed is this superdosing of phytase. And well, phytase, it, 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 it helps with the hydrolysis of the phytic acid. And phytic acid, sometimes it can trap important nutrients such as calcium and phosphorus. They are essential for especially bone development. But also with the release of the calcium, since they have uh, positive cations, there will be an alteration on the pH of the gut. With this alteration in the pH of the gut, we may start observing effects on the microbiota, which recently has been very well studied. It's still a gray area because we're still trying to figure it out how and connect the dots about the, uh, the shifts that we can observe. Um, so, well, in this study, we concluded that above 2000 FTU, we observed effects over the bone health, growth performance, and nutrient digestibility. Moving on a little bit to the xylanase study, trying to connect both, we observed in this xylanase study some interesting effects over the microbiota. When we evaluate microbiota, we, 
we sometimes evaluate uh, from phylum level, family, genus, and species. Of course, when we observe the effects uh, at family and genus level, we hopefully to see sometimes at species level, which is more specific. But in this island A study, we observed that uh, interesting shifts only at family and genus level, which may be due a wide range of effects. Xylanase has been very well studied, and there are some mechanisms that some research uh, point out. The first one is throughout the reduction of the digestive uh, viscosity, because xylanase will target the beta-1-4 bonds of the xylan molecule, which is responsible sometimes to trap important nutrients. So xylanase will break down these bonds and open, let's say, open more space for other endogenous enzymes to act over the xylan. Because in the xylan molecule, there are more than 10 enzymes acting at the same time. So xylanase is just a small part of it. But since xylanase target this beta-1-4 bonds, with that breakdown of these bonds, there will be a release of some NSP fermentable compounds that can, be that can be used for the bacteria as a substrate. Additionally, uh, there can be a release of important antioxidants, such as the ferulic acid, which has been very well studied as a powerful antioxidant. And we concluded that supplementing xylanase it can be an interesting alternative for nursery pigs to reduce, uh, to actually module positive, mod modulate the microbiota. Another effect that we observed, it was a reduction on the MDA levels, malondialdehyde, which is related to lipid peroxidation. And it, there are some other papers that reported uh, an incre uh, a reduction of the MDA levels with xylanase due to a uh, release of ferulic acid, for example, helping with the reduction of the MDA and consequently improving the antioxidant capacity of the animals. Um, since it's a swine podcast, I won't be going deep in my chicken study, but overall feed enzymes, especially phytase and xylanase, that for a long period of time, it was only associated with growth performance and nutrient digestibility, we may um, have uh, some future research to do to better investigate those mechanisms. Gotcha. Yeah, and like you said, sometimes uh, when I've read a lot of studies on xylanase that have some show a little bit of growth performance, but oftentimes they don't really so show much growth performance. But I feel more often than not, what I do see is that... Um, they rather than growth performance, they might improve mortality, um, which could be due, like what you kind of talked about, could be due to that improved intestinal health. Um, but one question I had about the uh, phytase studies, you said um, it changes the the pH of the gut, which could um, induce some effects on the microbiota there. Um, wh how exactly does that, uh, or what, where exactly? I guess would be the better question of where does that uh, change the uh, pH, and have you seen any? Um, effects of any of that shift? Well, in my studies, we haven't measured the pH, but it's important to point out the main site of activity is in the stomach. But uh, since my studies, we, we've, we tested a super dosing supplementation, by having uh, a higher levels of phytase, the hydrolysis of phytic acid, we aim to continue throughout the gut. So, at the stomach, phytase will release calcium and phosphorus as well. But with high levels of phytase, these hydrolysis can remain active throughout the gut. And, close, uh, and by releasing calcium, which has positive cations, that can be an alteration on the pH uh, throughout the gut, the small intestine. So this xylanase study um, was done in the nursery phase, um, and yours did show a little bit of growth performance there at the end when the DDGs uh, increased. Do you think that would continue if that was um, fed throughout the finishing phase? Well, firstly, it's important to point out that when we discuss enzyme activity, we need to discuss substrate levels of that enzyme we'll target. 
So in my studies, we, we supplemented DDGs with increasing levels being 0% in the first diets, 15 and 30% in the last diets. Um, since DDGs con can contain high levels of NSPs, we expected a, a higher uh, growth performance due to the high levels of DDGs. But there are also some interesting papers that show it that xylanase requires an adaptation period of minimum 15 days. But also at the same time, during the nursery phase, the whole digestive system of the pig will get more mature. So when the animal starts the growing and finishing phase, um, of course, we can observe xylanase effects due to high levels of NSP that of, it will be increased in this upcoming phases. However, it can, the results are variable because the, the digestive system of the pig will be more adapted to. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing the results of your dissertation with us. Thank you so much for having me, Clay. I tried to wrap up uh, everything as much as I could. It's a lot of information, but I hope you guys can get a great value from it. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah you did a great job <laughs> condensing it all into such a short time period. So. Thank you for that. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to talk about your research. See you later.